So our complaints that were submitted uh, to the administration were anonymous, but uh, they talked of like all the like sec they have sexual harassment charges, uh, uh, sexual harassment cases that happened. Uh, how people uh, were, how so many people uh, did face molestation and um, even abuse to some part. And then um, there's obviously the trauma of being in a stampede. You know, people were piled up, and the volunteers had to drag them outside. Uh, one of the volunteers at the gate, when she approached one of the hooligans, asking them to go out to the college, he she spat on her. And other volunteers were also pulled by their hair. The fact that the principal watched while, you know, they were, the protest was dismantled in a very violent manner, right? Police women were picking up and throwing uh, girls into the into the bus, etc. Uh, the, the interview that the principal later did to, uh, gave to a YouTube channel, uh, the only media sort of interview or, you know, response that she's had, uh, in person, where she dismissed the entire incident. She called it a matter of bhir bhar. Proper touch, groping, cat calling, these are some of the forms of Eve teasing that women in India have to make peace with as they try and navigate through public spaces here. But when this kind of harassment is reported from inside a campus, it does raise questions about the security of female students as well as a certain mindset unleashing a form of sexual violence during college fest at DU. Trigger warning, comments related to sexual violence appear in this video. Viewer discretion is advised. News Laundry spoke with two students of the Indraprast College for Women, both of whom are among 230 victims who submitted complaints to the college principal on 31st March. Were there any special security arrangement put in place, unlike your regular college days, just to manage the crowd uh, during this two-day fest? So on the 27th and also on the 28th, like in the morning part, we did notice like police, like just having police on campus for like the management of the fest. It was, uh, uh, it was a considerable number on the morning of the 27th. However, there were not much there was not much police on the morning of the 28th. And when you are saying there were not enough police, like could you elaborate in what sense uh, did the security part seem off to you? Uh, I was at the gate when um, you know people started pushing on the gates, wanting to enter, but they had closed the gates by now so they were trying to enter and uh, I saw uh, the gate volunteers which were student volunteers um, they were discussing of what to do because it was so crowded and people were demanding entry pushing in on the gates and uh, I did not notice any other um, security than the student girl volunteers and uh, the security that is already there in front of our college every day, like the security guards and stuff. When you know that a crowd of 8,000 people are going to be, be there in the campus for an event, uh, we would expect that at least an ambulance and a police um, bus, a, a constable police force is there deployed, but there was neither ambulance nor was there police. There were just few constables and 
they were clearly not interested to handle the situation. And I know of women who got stopped by men inside the campus for several hours. So there were men uh, chanting slogans that uh, Miranda hamara hai, IPB hamara hai. It was not, the words are not exactly the same, but uh, the meaning is the same. That Miranda is also us, IP is also us. So, so the same thing that happened in IP, uh, sorry, Miranda House during the Diwali Fest, where again hooligans entered the campus, the same thing was done here. So then um, there were po there were placards saying I'm single. Um, then there are uh, videos and photos of men holding onto these placards. The student one just pulling girls out who were like either they were hurt or they had been molested or you know suffered some kind of injury in the uh, stampede. So um, one of my friends. Uh, her dress was kind of untied in the crowd itself and uh, she was kind of pushed into this. There is this uh, metal type thingy, thing that there was. She got pushed into that also like the nails were. The nails scratched her leg or something like that. There was no effort made to make sure that the hooligans, people who were drunk, people who were uh, molesting the women, um, there was no effort made to throw these people outside. Among the crowd, among the women who were stuck in the stampede, they, two of them sustained serious injuries. They had to undergo surgeries thereafter. And there were several other women who got panic attacks in the stampede, whose dresses were opened by men. They were undressed by the men. There was a girl whose dress was, uh, it, it, the back of the dress was strings. People untied it. Then, if if uh, boys put their hands inside the bralettes of women, they were able to enter. The ho college wall actually has even iron, uh, basically a preventive against people jumping over the walls, but they were able to cross all that. Then, after the, f uh, the, the, the event went up to till 10 o'clock, and even there, people were being troubled. They were being touched inappropriately. Um, there were people who were stalking the women. Apart from these student testimonies, News Laundry was also able to access handwritten complaints containing graphic details about the incident, thus begging the question as to why only one FIR has been filed by the police. There were people climbing up the walls of the campus and were entering the college and abusing us with the words like, Kaha jaegi ran, hamare paas aja and the boys which were around me in the crowd were squeezing my breast and even slapped my hips and I was not able to do anything. And there were no police. To the principal. High, unmanageable crowd in the college campus. Men holding placards, saying free hugs and single ready to mingle were seen. One of my friend volunteer got a leg muscle sprain because of the rush. To the principal. On the second day of Shruti concert, boys were touching the bare stomach and they push us. They were passing comments and continuously staring, which made me uncomfortable. The boys were smoking and spitting on the face. To the principal, at 8.10 p.m., near the ice cream stall outside college, a man who was casually walking, deliberately did not move in front of me, extended two fingers and touched my breast. Kindly note, the police officers were standing at a distance of five meters from me. In a strongly worded online petition, around 1,100 alumni of the IP college from India and abroad have come out in support of the students, asking the college principal why students were being threatened for protesting and why the traumatized students were not being offered adequate counselling services. Some of the major objections raised by the alumni network include, first, inadequate security arrangements at an event for which around 12,000 passes were issued. According to students, most of these passes were generated on the basis of a Google form with no entry fee as a barrier of sorts. Secondly, why did the principal on 3rd April announce setting up a new committee to look into the grievances of students when the college has its own ICC or Internal Complaints Committee. This, according to the alumni network, 
amounts to violation of POSH and UGC guidelines that mandate an ICC to look into the sexual harassment complaints. Thirdly, the problem with the panel constituted by DU is that it is headed by a male professor. The reason that UGC has said that, you know, 50% or so or more need to be women is because, you know, there's a certain sensitivity that one can expect. I mean, you know, women in particular uh, may not feel as comfortable uh, complaining to uh, to a man, telling, giving the details of what has transpired. Uh, this man has the, you know, he can not only read the uh, complaints, he's already outside the ICC. You see, so... So the penalty of of leaking uh, a complaint of sexual harassment, it started at that at that moment itself from him taking those complaints. Um, the DU committee that was formed uh, similarly does not have the presiding officer is is a male. Um, his uh, a daughter is is a student of Indra Pras College. Uh, so there's a conflict of interest there. There's no student representation over there. Uh, there are no members from, there's no member from an NGO. There are no women who are associated with women's causes, etc. So why do you have to form that committee at all when an ICC exists, at least on the website, on the DU website, uh, is a matter of complete mystery. We submitted a written complaint to uh called a meeting uh, along with the complainants. Uh, that that has occurred once. Uh, there uh, will be an investigation by the ICC for college now. And uh, the council that was appointed by the Delhi University has not interacted with uh, student representation as far as I know. Uh, on any occasion, they have not responded or gotten back to the complaints. So the basic protocols that come by while constituting a committee that there should be no conflict of interest has been broken. Why would anyone who is serious about this case do that? And in the in the notification that the university put out telling that a committee is being constituted, they even get the date of the event wrong. It stated that to look into the events of 29th. Uh, but the, uh, the, the stampede and the cases of molestation happened on 28th. For an institution that will be celebrating its 100th anniversary in 2024, some of the alumnus of the Indraprast College recalled similar experiences happening during cultural fests going as far back as the 60s to as recently as 2007 when students of the IP College were mobbed and allegedly subjected to sexual harassment on 18 September 2007. This was two days after DU had conducted the police constabulary exam on the premises. The incident had sparked large-scale protests 16 years ago as well. I, I must be 19 years old at that time. And uh, there was a cultural program in our college. It was, I remember very correctly, it was based on some excerpt of Ramayana and uh, named as Saket, one of the most beautiful girl of our college, because we used to see the rehearsals, was playing as Kake. And on the day of the function, there was a big halla gula. There was no security at the gate. People were just rushing in. But the college didn't have any security. And I, I heard that people came from the backside also and from front, front also because we had no nobody you know, at the gate as a guard or anything like that type of people. Tears in my eyes seeing one girl being dragged by the policewoman and the man. On 20th April, when News Laundry visited the IP College campus, we were told that in addition to one male and female security guard at the staff, only one more personnel has been added after the incident. One PCR van, a regular fixture outside the campus, was also found stationed next to the boundary wall of the college from where hooligans had managed to get access to the college last time. When we tried contacting Principal Poonam Kumaria as well as the administrative 
officer of the college dinesh sundaryal we were told that the concerned authorities will speak only after the du appointed panel has submitted its findings and refused to respond to specific questions the only fir filed by the delhi police in connection with the case is under ipc sections 188 and 337 related to causing danger to human life meanwhile the complaint filed on behalf of a police constable mentions only the commotion outside the college due to a function at which a punjabi singer was supposed to perform news laundry tried contacting the io in this case but he was not available for comment this entire debate as far as safety of women in public spaces is concerned the feminists always say why do you have to uh, restrict women to a particular uh, space or or build boundaries or or why do you have to introduce this segregation of a certain kind to ensure that they are safe raising the walls i mean you know wa- high walls is not going to keep the lumpen element out so even if even if 800 were not even if 2000 the police has said that the ip grounds can only uh, sort of have 2000 people can only um, you know uh, have space for 2000 so the 2000 themselves 10% of them could have been the kind of you know men who came in there so we do need to sort of work a lot harder to figure out what gives these men increasing impunity to do what they did as as far as it comes to higher walls i'll talk, i can only talk about indra press college from a practical point of view like i've said intellectually i believe that walls and locks and gates cannot uh, you know cannot stop this the state machinery and those associated with it may consider segregation as the solution to keep sexual harassment at bay but experts have been critical of such suggestions in the 2011 book why loiter women and risk on mumbai streets authors shilpa farke samira khan and shilpa rana de write safety for women is framed through the creation of a fallacious opposition between the middle class respectable woman and the vagrant male by creating the image of certain men as the perpetrators of violence against women women's access to public spaces is further controlled and circumscribed and acquires an unquestionable rationality at a time when the role of women is changing as they try to climb up the ladder of social mobility a clash between their aspiration and perception of the society is bound to happen the question is whether just calling out is enough or more institutional mechanisms need to be in place to make women feel safe the subscription model is something that keeps news on your float but we need hundreds of thousands of people to completely transform the news ecosystem so you pay for news so it serves you so click on the link with this video subscribe to news laundry and pay to keep news free aur garv se kaho mere kharch par azad hai khabrein